three small blue on underside of the small blue, which is nice and speckled and clear, and the male small blue, which has the blue speckles on the wings, on the upper wings, and the female is on the right hand side and she has no blue speckles, a very dark, almost brown butterfly, but extremely small, about the size of your pinky nail. Here's the distribution of the small blue in Berwickshire. And as you can see, it's, it's a very, very scarce butterfly. And I think it's mostly, it's stronger in the south of Berwickshire than it is further towards Eyemouth, where it begins to spin out a little. It used to be common around Coldingham and even St. Ab's Head many years ago now, but it's it, it disappeared from there maybe 50 years ago now. And um, yes, it's it's a species which is holding on, I would think, more than anything else, and hopefully it can hold on a little longer. It depends on only the one food plant, which is the kidney vetch, which is common enough on the east coast of Berwickshire. But the small blue demands, I think, a little bit more than just the food plant. There is, there's also shelter to look for, and there are various other little foibles that, it, that the butterfly looks for to, to, and for it to be able to survive. So up from Lamberton to Burnmouth shore, this is a fantastic shoreline, very underexplored over the years, very few visitors to it. It's just north of the harbour at Burnmouth, there's a little set of steps along at the other end of Parton Hall, where the little row of white houses along by the sea. And if you go further along through the boulder screes to the far end of the coast that it opens up into a grassland and in that grassland it's full of wild flowers and butterflies, moths, birds, everything you can imagine and it's a, just a wonderful place to spend a day. In amongst all the butterflies of the new, there is one new species taken over here which is the large skipper which I have here. The large skipper butterflies have always been around in Berwickshire but maybe very very ones, twos maybe every year but this last 10 years, they've, they've really expanded in Berwickshire and you, they've become quite common in open grassland. Even uh, set aside grassland on farmland as well, you can find them. But uh, down in the coast, they're, they're doing really well just now. And they're a wonderful, colourful butterfly. So the common blue is, I think we think of the... Memories, I always think, memories of going to the beach in, in, in the summer was of blue butterflies. It was always blue butterflies or burnet moths. I always remember burnet moths when I was young. And the blue but the common blue butterfly is, was our only resident blue butterfly in this area. But there is a new one which we'll talk about later. And the common blue butterfly doing very well just now is it flies... It flies on almost all the coastline. Uh, it it dem demands really very little. I mean, bird's foot trefoil is its main food plant, although it can go for clovers or black medic or any of these other small vetches. And um, they, they do remarkably well. The, the males are, are, are very blue. The females can vary. As you can, the, the middle butterfly is a, is a female. They can, they can vary immensely from brown through to blue. And um, they're, they're very moorish to photograph. I think once you see one, if you have a camera, you will be running after it, or at least trying to run after it to get a photograph. <laughs> so butterfly food plants are very, very important. Of course, the coast is one of the best places for plants in Berwickshire. Unbroken habitat from south to north, which is pretty rare these days in a habitat which is becoming increasingly fragmented. There is a, 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 a good list of plants. These are all fairly common plants, uh, pretty much everyday plants that you could find even, even, even inland anywhere. But on the coast, as I said, it's an unbroken habitat here and it, and, and it really does help. Here we have a, a red admiral egg on common nettle and a small blue caterpillar 
attached to Kidney Vetch Flowerhead, and that was at Lamberton Coast. This year, in fact, this this year will be July, late July. So at one of the new, another new butterfly, we have lots of new butterflies coming up into Berwickshire just now with this, the changing climate is pushing everything up into the north of the country. We are very lucky, I think. We, we, we seem to be, uh, we seem to be home to a few of these species from the south. The wall brown has been a regular in Berwickshire for many years, but off and on and ifs and buts, ones and twos only. But this last 10 years, they really have taken over, especially on the coast. But even now, pushing inland through the river valleys, especially the Tweed Valley, through Melrose, even as far as Melrose, and up in even as far as Selkirk. I could have filled every square on this map. I didn't do so. I could probably have. The Wall Brown have now gone as far north as Fife this year. So they're beginning to colonise Fife and going further north yet. They're having problems further south with the wall brown because of uh, climate as well, because the wall brown traditionally has two broods per year. But they seem to be putting on a third brood at the, at the end of the year, and that brood is under threat because there's not enough <laughs> uh, heat, not enough daylight. The season just isn't accommodating a third brood. So they're struggling a little further south, but we're we're doing really well with them just now. So hopefully long may that continue. What? Oh, sorry. So here are the wall wall brown is a as you can see it, it loves vertical surfaces and it's a very what would you call it camouflaged butterfly. It can be difficult to see when it closes its wings. That's its whole point. And uh, th this this is the egg on the top side, the egg, just before it hatches. And the little spots on the egg are actually the caterpillar head through the, <laughs> through the uh, egg surface and the, the hatched caterpillar below. Well, the wall brown is a grassland butterfly, so it, it just loves broken ground wherever there's grassland growing on uh, eroded bankings or you know farm trucks things like that i found that they do really well on the edges of plowed fields where the grass is broken by the side by the, by the plow on the side of the field and and they do really well along those edges the grayling butterfly is a butterfly that's in a bit of trouble just now and that's Due to due to really just lack of habitat, I think over the years it's disappeared from sites around Hoyke, uh, railway line sites. Uh, it was it was known from Gordon Moss at a time. It's now no longer seen there. It, it's probably it probably used the old railway line bankings um, as 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 a as a way of getting from the coast to inland sites, and those. Railway lines are still there, but they're, they're much degraded over the years. And the grayling has since retreated to the coast where it struggles in a, in, in, a, in a sense. And I'm not very sure why, whether it could be a climate situation with the grayling just not happy with the climate the way it is. Every now and again, every two, three years, you'll have a good number of grayling and then the numbers will dip away to nothing again. And it's a bit of a worry, but it's a it's a very lovely butterfly, grassland butterfly again. It does very well on these coastal braes. Um, Saint Abbs Head's a very nice place to go and look for them. Um, yeah, but it's it's present throughout the the coastal strip at the moment. Hopefully, that will remain so. So, if you talk of coastal butterflies, of course. You think of blue butterflies and all these skippers and things, but the woodland butterflies can appear on the coast from time to time where woodland meets the sea, and that's not really very, very often in Berwickshire. But of course, Pease Dean Reserve has a woodland which almost reaches the shore if it wasn't for that caravan park. 
and there are f a few butterflies that turn up from time to time along the beaches, along the cliff tops, which we you would think were a little out of place, like the comma, the speckled wood in the middle here, and the orange tip, of course. But there are a few food plants for these butterflies along these cliff tops, and they do still hold on to these little areas. Wherever there's a wooded copse anywhere by the sea, these butterflies always seem to be in close proximity. And the same could be said for the Red Admiral's large white, which you wouldn't expect large white to be known as a woodland butterfly, but it's very much at home, more at home in woodland than it is out in the open farmland, where everyone expects it to be, flying around the tops of trees with the Red Admirals during the late, latter part of the summer. So, here is Berwickshire's second blue butterfly, pretty new to Berwickshire, although it's been, it's been doing the rounds maybe about 10 years, but no one's ever really been able to see it very often. And it's, 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 a, it's, very, it's still very scarce, but I think it's a bit more common than it appears to be. It, it's the holly blue. It depends on holly and ivy, and um, it's not your normal blue butterfly. It lives at the tops of uh, scrub and shrubs, and it will fly around just like a speckled wood butterfly. But it's um, it's it, it, in truth, it's more a garden, but it's a true garden butterfly rather than an open countryside butterfly. And there's been sightings at Burnmouth, Coldingham, and Eyemouth in this last few years and we're pretty sure that it must have a foothold in almost all the Berwickshire coastal villages and towns and perhaps even inland I would think round about Duns, Swinton, Ayton, Churnside there's bound to be a holly blue colony here or there wherever there are good hollies or good ivies which there are most gardens then I think these butterflies may just be a little more widespread than we know of. And I hear reports every now and again about blue butterflies, someone seeing a blue butterfly in their garden. If you see a blue butterfly in your garden in the springtime, it's got to be holly blue. It can't be anything else, and it's a wonderful thing to see. This one was at Burnmouth when I least expected it. Behind the village hall in Burnmouth, I'd just finished a day's walk, and I was a bit desperate, still waiting for a bus, when I walked round the corner and saw a blue butterfly at the top of the hedge. And I knew straight away what I'd saw, but I could not believe my eyes. And after a while, it flew back, it flew back and forth, back and forth, and finally it flew down to a level where I could get a photograph. And I was so pleased to get a photograph of this butterfly because it has eluded me for years and years and years. But it's, uh, as you can see, it's, uh, it, it's a really spectacular looking thing. <laughs> it's beautiful. So, St. Tab's Head and the grassland butterflies. Grassland butterflies are not doing quite so well inland these days, especially around arable farmland, where grassland is being chipped back piece by piece, so trees are being planted on top of it, but St. Dab's Head still stands alone as being an open grassland area where at least some of these species can spread their wings. As you can see, ringlet, meadow brown, which were once hugely common, not quite so common I don't find anymore in the arable landscape, but where there's a grassland that's unhindered, and uh, maybe maybe a little grazed, not overgrazed, not too many trees, then they can find these butterflies in huge numbers. And then you can see this photograph here on the ragwort. These are mostly meadow browns. There's a small copper in amongst them. And down the front we have an antler moth. As you can see an antler moth just helping itself to the ragwort. They do control the ragwort at St. Tab's Head just now, which I grumble at, but well, it has to be controlled to a degree, I think. And um, the few ragwort heads that are there are absolutely covered in butterflies by the back end of July because there are so few <laughs> good nectar sources like this around. 
and even more ragwort. But this is the small skipper butterfly. It's new at St. Tab's Head, but it's not new in Berwickshire. There are hundreds of these little butterflies which came up from the south a few years back. They've been here maybe a decade now. They can swarm in numbers of three, four, five hundred on open grassland site. And they only found St. Tab's Head maybe two, three years ago. And they really have made some headway. And I think in a few years' time, there will be nothing but small <laughs> skipper butterflies. They, they are beginning to take over. But uh, they're very quick, very small, quite bright orange. But you can lose them really easily on the grassland. You can be walking through hundreds of them and never see a one. But they really are, uh, really are expert little butterflies at getting around. Oh, have a look. Oh, yes. So you can't go really to St. Ab's Head without the small copper. It's a, it's a stronghold for um, this, this particular species. The best place in Berwickshire to see this one species. They emerge somewhere around April and they'll fly through May, June into July. And a second brood will take over through July, August, September, October. And a partial brood will take us through into no early November at St. Tab's Head. They're a butterfly that can be seen every single day of the year at St. Tab's Head Reserve. The numbers of small copper here are matched nowhere else in Berwickshire and it's a fantastic place to go and watch them. The The best places around the Meyer Lock, uh, the, 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 oh no, is it the east side, the east side of Meyer Lock at St. Tab's Head, uh, the grassland there is just full of these little butter, butterflies. Um, just hugely entertaining. On the right hand side, this is a small copper egg. They lay their eggs on two or three plants, common sorrel, sheep sorrel, or just common docks. Um, they lay the eggs on the upper side of the leaf and the caterpillars then, once hatched, crawl round to the hind side of the leaf where they feed. But the little eggs are very distinct, almost like little golf balls, tiny little golf balls. So on to, on to the northern brown argus. And um, this is our number one species, I would think. It's been, it's been around for hundreds of years, I would think, on the Berkshire coast. But it is never common. It's always under threat and it is in really quite a unique butterfly. We're very lucky in the Scottish borders nevertheless uh, Berwickshire for, to have such a unique butterfly. In the south of England they don't have this. Europe they don't have anything quite like this although they, they, they do have a northern brown argus but nothing that looks like this. It's a, it's a unique species left over, a leftover from the Ice Age and then um, on these seaward cliffs we have some very very decent colonies it's a butterfly that has only one food plant and that is the common rock rose and we have tons of common rock rose in the in good places along the coast especially Burnmouth and north and North of uh, St. Well, St. Ab's Head and north from there, you can, there's some very good uh, colonies of common rock rose. And there's a, a mating pair of northern brown argus, uh, an egg laid on the top of the leaf, which is very typical of northern brown argus, and a tiny little caterpillar on the underside of the leaf, which is only the, the very first one I've ever found, and I've been looking for them for years and years and years. And, it's no wonder that I hadn't seen one because they are minuscule and uh, hugely, brilliantly camouflaged as well. <laughs> so it's not an easy thing to find. But the Northern Brown Ar Argus is, um, it's one of, the, one of the things I look forward to most in a year, going out to look for them. I think Northern Brown Argus at Burnmouth, Burnmouth is always the best place to go because you don't have to climb up and down steep slopes to see them. You can walk down towards Parton Hall, at the towards the harbour at Burnmouth, and they're all all along the the cliff side. So it's always a, a nice walk early June is the best time to do that. 
So moving on to the dark green fritillary, which is actually a reasonably common butterfly, but not quite so much on the south side of Berwickshire coastal path. But if you go further north of Eyemouth and then St Abbs and then even further north towards Lumsden and Doolaw, there are quite literally hundreds of them flying back and forth. And they're quite a sturdy, robust butterfly, bright orange, you can't miss them. And they fly through July and into August. And um, this under, this is the, the hind wing of the butterfly in the middle. And it's very distinct. There's only one other UK species with an under wing like this, and that is the high brown fritillary, which we don't get over here. But we we only have this one fritillary species. But I think a few years ago we would have had a few more fritillary species, especially on the coast. Maybe the small peril bordered fritillary, or even well, uh, from the from the histories itself, said the marsh fritillary, once once inhabited uh, Coldingham Moor. But those uh, those fritillary seem to have long gone from these areas that were a bit wetter than they are they are just now. Onto small heath, which is probably one of the butterflies which I, I remember seeing all those years ago, maybe 2004 or 5, and I didn't know what this butterfly was at all. There were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them flying around, didn't know really what they were. But now I know what they are. <laughs> it's a lovely little butterfly. Honey coloured is really the colour of it when it's flying around. Honey coloured. And it never opens its wings as part from its flying, of course. But when it rests, it's always got its wings closed. So it never opens its wings when it's at rest. And it's a grassland species. And May, June, July is the best time to see it. And there's some lovely colonies up around Coldingham Bay and further north. And the one place that it's missing is St. Ab's Head, where I never, ever see it very often at St. Ab's Head. And I don't know why. It seems the perfect habitat for it, but I've never, ever been able to find them there. So, finessids of the coastal strip. The peacocks and the tortoise shells are very familiar butterflies, although the peacock has become more familiar this past 20 years than it used to be. The tortoise shell has struggled this past 10 years, but it's really starting to come back, especially this year of all years. It really did have a good year. So I'm hopeful that both of these species that both use just common nettles to survive will, will do well in the future. And of course the painted lady, which is, which is a butterfly which we got so used to last year because there was such a huge number last year came in off the coast. It was quite a spectacular thing to see. I mean, uh, one day I was down at Burnmouth, for instance, there was three, four, five hundred along the coast. It was just, it was just crazy. I even had reports of them being washed up on the, washed up on the beach, dead, dead ones, because there were just so many. And I've, I don't, I've just definitely never seen anything like that in my life. And so we had some good fun looking for these down the coast and uh, here's the caterpillar in the middle, a big bright caterpillar. There was plenty of those last year to look for. And this is the hind wing of a, an eye spot, a painted lady eye spot on the hind wing. So the, of all the species that we've looked at, there are, there are a few missing which don't, ha don't um, don't inhabit the coast at all. A lot of those, like um, like Scotch Argus or a large heath or things like that. And green hair streak would be in that group where you would not expect to see a green hair streak on the coast because there's very little habitat left for it. Really, it's more of a moorland butterfly. And only a few years back, it was uh, it was absent from Berwickshire completely. It was it was more a central borders butterfly. But happily, a few years back, someone found the green hair streak on the Berwickshire northern border of Sutra on Sutra Moor, which was fantastic. And I went up to see those green hair streak, and there's the one on the right hand side is is a Sutra Moor Berwickshire green hair streak, and uh, 
absolutely fantastic little book, tiny little butterflies of springtime. And down in the coast, um, I just, I think I've looked for Green Hair Streak half-heartedly, but never really very, with much hope. And one day while walking down the brae at Burnmouth, a little butterfly flew out from under my feet and onto a red valerian leaf and sat there quite happily. And I looked at it and I knew what it was, but I couldn't really believe what I was looking at. It was a green hair streak. And I don't know to this day where it came from. There are no real possible ways apart from possibly Lamberton Moor where it could have come from, but it's very, it's a very long shot, even for such a small butterfly. Now, down south, the green hair streak butterfly has several food plants, where up here in Scotland it only has, they've recorded one, which is blaberry, bilberry. So it could be that it's using something else, using another food plant up here. Could it be gorse? Could it be blackthorn? Could it be broom? We don't know, really. But there could be a small colony of green hair streaks on the coast somewhere waiting to be found, but I haven't found them yet, and I'm hoping I do. So thank you very much for listening. I hope, I hope that's been, I hope that's been half an hour at least. I don't, I don't know, I don't know how long I've been. <laughs> well, it's gone in a flash. <laughs> I know. I'm thinking my time's. I think my time's running out. But this is a, a, love, a lovely northern brown argus from Burnmouth, sitting on solid burnet with a common rock rose background. <laughs> it's a, it's a, I just I just live for the spring and the summer and look uh, running after butterflies. It's it gets as I said it gets harder every year to do because you, unfortunately you get older, but <laughs> <laughs> but it's great fun anyway. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Ian. That was really terrific. That the quality of your photographs oh, thank you. is just magnificent. Um, I mean, I I as you know, had been photographing some some uh, butterflies myself. I'm a bit uh, shy to use the iRecord app, but um, I'm going after things with my telephone. <laughs> 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 the, the photograph, you know, there, there is, it is, it is very satisfying.